Hello everyone. My name is Toby. I'm a research analyst at Trilateral Research. And I will be briefly discussing with you today the building stock and scientific databases of the decision support tool. So the data situation in municipalities is often scarce, and we do find uh, a lot of the time that uh, data availability is quite low. But in order to test the tool that's being built, data has been collected from our implementing partners of front-runner municipalities, as Sebastian alluded to earlier, that's the municipality of uh, Valente, uh, region of uh, Andalusia and city of Copenhagen, uh, as well as openly available structured and unstructured databases as well. Now the data that uh, is collected is based on the requirements identified from methodology development. So for example, the methodologies that have been explained previous to my presentation, so the energy demand, um, life cycle assessment, as well as indoor climate. And then you have socioeconomic and supply side methodologies. Now the data is split into five categories. Uh, first of all, looking at real data, that's building level data um, from municipalities. Uh, then you have uh, regional default data, uh, national default data, EU default data, as well as international or scientific or modeled uh, default data. Now this data also comes in three different levels of detail. So that includes minimum requirements. That's the minimum, uh, the minimum amount of data that's required for the decision support tool to run. Then we have desired data. So this includes additional data, which helps to improve the results or the output from the decision support tool. And then you have detailed data that includes all of data requirements that have uh, been developed as a result of the methodology development. Now the databases for the error data tool are split into the building stock database, um, socioeconomic database, life cycle assessment database, weather or climate database, and then renovation measures database. For this presentation, I'll be focusing mainly on the first three. So first of all, the building stock database, this consists of all data that's related to the physical state of the building itself. It includes geometric, uh, building geometric data, um, that includes building height, width, area, and what have you. And then you have building geographic data, so looking at building um, location information, coordinates. And then you have building material data, so that's the type of material um, that's been used for a specific buildings. So, for example, type of material for building roof or building exterior wall. And then you have renovation data, so that includes number of renovations and uh, renovation cycles. And next, we have the socioeconomic database. And this consists of data which represents the socioeconomic condition of a municipality or region. And this includes demographic data, so such as a population or number of inhabitants in a specific building or region. And you have energy consumption data that looks at you know, the amount of energy consumed per building or per region. And you have energy cost data that looks at the expense um, in relation to the energy consumption um, for a building or region. We have municipal financial data, so looking at uh, the economic situation of a uh, municipality or region or country, so that looks at things like average income or um, GDP. And then we have data on building occupancy patterns. So for example, what the occupancy of certain buildings are um, in the morning, in the evening, or at night, and looking at the differences between the occupancy, occupancy patterns for different types of buildings. So for example, the uh, patterns for the school be different from that of a hospital and that will be different from that of a um, an office building so then looking at the life cycle assessment database this consists of data that represents the life cycle based energy and emissions um, performance of buildings and this that the data that's that's um, that makes up the life cycle assessment database is mainly default data and it also looks at the share of the renewable and non-renewable energy um, in the primary energy source. It looks at the primary energy factors for each of the different primary energy sources, as well as carbon dioxide emissions of um, building materials that have been used and for technical building service components. So 
the following data collection, um, the, the next process is really data cleaning uh, or data pre-processing. And then we look towards storing the data. Um, because the, data, the database in itself or databases are not just um, created as uh, inputs for the decision support tool, but the databases are also um, key exploitable results from the project. We are looking at um, independent storage of the data that's beyond um, its use in the decision, the decision support tool. Now, data cleaning has been performed to address um, certain issues uh, that have been identified from the data that's been, that's been collected. Um, that includes incorrect data types, so having um, data types that are incorrect, um, values that are incorrect for certain variables. Then you have um, inconsistent values, so uh, having values that are not consistent with the variables that um, that are being that have been defined by the methodology development, and having inconsistent units, so having different um, values for a specific variable that appear in different units. Then gaps. Uh, this is uh, one of the main issues with the data that's being collected, as Sebastian has alluded to earlier. The realistic situation in a lot of municipalities really is that the data that, uh, that is needed to perform calculations is not being tracked fully um, and it's not being measured fully. So there are, there are a lot of gaps um, and those gaps are being filled by um, default data or by calculations. And then you have irrelevant data. So um, at, in, at some times you will get uh, data that you don't actually need, and then you have duplicate data where you, know, you get duplicate uh, duplications of you know, data that you have um, that has been collected. So the data uh, is being stored based on the EU's mandate for um, openly available data. That's called the Open Research Data Pilot or ORDP, and uh, this en enables and ensures open access and reuse of research data. And finally. Um, we are currently uh, we're currently using the uh, Zenodo repository um, as our uh, storage option for the data that's being collected. And um, in the future, an SQL database is planned um, in order to make the data uh, available to more external stakeholders. <laughs>